Thanks, Matt. Awesome. How you doing, everyone? Good to see you. Thank you, Frank. Isn't Frank an attractive man? Did you know it was Frank's birthday yesterday? Don't go anywhere, mate. Stay there. I meant Friday. And also, um, someone, Loisha's birthday today. Is that right? Simon Sweeney's birthday yesterday. Is that right? Nori? Annette Fox. Is Annette here? Oh, okay. Will La- Is Will here? Where are you, Will? Okay, Will Lavers, birthday on Friday. Anyone else this week? Hey? Eliza's, no, it was her birthday last week, but it was her party yesterday. Is that right? Is Eliza here? Oh, Eliza's down the back. If it was your birthday in that period, could you stand to your feet right now? I said stand up. Thanks, Loish. Also, Simon, oh, this is awesome, Frank. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Is that cool? I just, I just felt like so many birthdays, we don't do it every week, but I just thought it might be good to do that tonight. Is that cool? Okay, ready? Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. That was terrible. All right, that was terrible. All right, let's do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everyone. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. And did you know that all of them are single? Yes. Praise God. So, uh, and ready to mingle. Frank's not. Where's he gone? All right. Okay. I'll have a talk to Frank later. Awesome. Uh, wonderful to see you here tonight. Uh, thanks for coming out. And, uh, you know, I've been, our night services, like the praise and worship has just been phenomenal. And uh, last Sunday night was just awesome as well. I mean, we ended up going for about two hours at the end or something like that, and so, which was great. And I thought they were great tonight as well. So I just really feel with our night service, something special is starting to happen uh, in the realm of praise and worship. So I just think every time we get together, uh, God's going to do something really cool, which is great. Um, turn with me in your Bibles. Actually, you don't have to turn. It'll be on the screen. Um, and it's Psalm uh, 69, verse 9. Uh, Psalm 69, verse 9. And it says this. Because zeal for your house has eaten me up, and the approaches of those who approach you have fallen on me. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. John chapter 2 verse 17 also says this. Then Jesus' disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. In some translations, zeal for your house consumes me. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. I just ask and pray that you would just help us be people to be real fans. I thank you and praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. That passage of scripture, which is just a couple of very short verses, says, zeal for his house consumes me. That word zeal is talking about passion. And so what that means is that Jesus was passionate about the house of God. And God's desire is that we are passionate about the house of God. You know, there are a lot of people that are passionate about Jesus, which is so important. And a lot of people that are passionate about his presence, which is so important as well. Passionate to see him move, passionate for the lost, passion for the community. All those things are really, really important. But there's another thing that every single one of us need to have passion for, and that's passion for the house of God. It's amazing to me the amount of people that love Jesus but don't like his house. You need to understand something. Your priorities are a little bit out of whack. It's important for us to be passionate about Jesus, but it's also important for us to be passionate about the house of God. Even some people who go to the house of God aren't that passionate. They're kind of like spectators or attenders, but God wants us to be people who are actually passionate when we come to the house of God and passionate about the things of God and passionate uh, about his house. Zeal consumes me it says. I'm a big fan of sport. I love going to sporting events. I know that a lot of you guys, when you go out and do fun stuff, you go four-wheel driving or you go fishing and that sort of thing. Me, I like going to sporting events. I like going to the football. I like going to the cricket. I like going to the NRL, the rugby union, tennis. I like the whole thing. I like going to all of it. I love going to sport. And the reality is whenever you go to some sporting event, there's lots of spectators, but there's only a number of what I call real fans. Well, there's a lot of spectators and a lot of attenders, but there are some people who are actually really serious, full-on passionate fans uh, for their team. If you watch the Australian Davis Cup team, you will notice that there's a group of guys dressed in yellow and they're called the Fanatics. 
And you know who they are because they're very boisterous, they're very passionate, and they're very loud. Everyone there is a spectator, but those guys are the true fans. Those guys are the real fans of that team and of that sport. If you follow cricket and you see the English cricket team play, you'll notice a group called the Barmy Army. And those guys, they're sitting there, they're drinking all day as well, and they're singing songs all day and that sort of thing. And they are passionate about their sporting team. I believe that God's desire is that our church will not just be filled with spectators, but that we will be filled with people who have zeal, oh, oh, praise God, zeal and passion for his house. That God is looking for some people who aren't just spectators, but actually real fans. And so I want to talk to you tonight about seven signs that you're a real fan. Seven signs that you're a real fan about the house, not just about Jesus, not just about the community, not just about the presence of God, but actually passionate about the house of God as well. The first sign uh, that you're a real fan is that real fans are present. What that means is they actually go to the games. Or another way of putting it, they're actually people who actually go to church as well. Bible says in Psalm 84 verse, t- uh, 84 verse 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. It was so funny when I was a youth pastor, there was a time when our youth ministry, nobody wanted to go to it. And even the kids who went to it wouldn't tell their friends that they came. But we had this amazing thing happen where we started kind of like having a revival that if hundreds of kids come to our youth ministry. And then it kind of, and it became a bit of a cool thing in town to actually do. And I remember one time I was actually um, running a lunchtime program in one of the local high schools. And we were doing that and we had a number of kids come to this lunchtime program and it was lots of fun. We had lots of games and activities and, and that sort of thing. And, 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 I have, and at the same time, we actually had TV advertising uh, and our youth group, just like our youth group here, was called Impact Youth. And, uh, and we used to have TV advertising. And this was, you know, a long time ago. Now, it was during the time when Australian Idol was really big. And so during Australian Idol, our youth group would have advertising, TV advertising. And so, and, and, and I remember one time we went to this particular school. We're walking around and there's all these kids following us around the school. And uh, we're going in to do, run this lunchtime program. And I heard kids saying, I heard this girl behind me, saw this girl walking behind me. And she was acting like she knew us, but we'd never actually met her before. And she was actually telling, and she was going around and, and she goes, oh yeah, I go to Impact Youth, I go to Pastor Ben's youth group. I remember sitting there thinking, I've never seen you before in my life. You say you come, but you don't actually come. A real fan is somebody who's actually in the house of God. Not just someone who talks about it or says they're going to do it. It's actually someone who is consistent and actually in the house of God. I learned this playing sport as well. That when you're winning, everybody wants to come and support you. And when you're not winning, it's kind of like people just don't want to know you. I remember one time I were at this, um, when I was playing AFL at, at, for a local club and it was the grand final day. And on grand final day, you have a lot more supporters turn up than what you normally have. And there was a few thousand people at the game. And in those days, they could actually walk out um, and we would have a quarter time. This was in AFL. We'd have a quarter time and three quarter huddle where the coach would talk to us. And you'd get these uh, fans come and they would stand around. Um, you know, and listen to the coach's address. And I remember in the grand final, there was one particular guy and he was yelling at us. Well, well, not not, not telling us off, but he's, and we were the Tigers. And he goes, come on, Tigers, we can do this, we can do this. And I looked at him and the rest of my team looked at him and we're like, we've never even seen you before, mate. You haven't been here all year. Now you rock up to the grand final and act like you're a real fan. You're not a real fan because real fans are present. Real fans are people who actually go and attend. A real fan of the house of God is someone who is present. They're in the house of God. The second sign uh, that you're a real fan is that a real fans are primed. What that means is real fans come and they're primed, ready uh, for the game to begin. In America, in the NFL, they actually have a... um, they have a thing called tailgate parties. And so what that means is that they have, um, they've got these utes and these four-wheel drives and they would set up barbecues and the game wouldn't be on until later that night. But, but lunchtime that day, they would set up in the car park and they would have tailgate parties. And so they're ready and they get themselves ready for the game to begin. They don't turn up to the game 10 minutes into the first quarter. 
they're actually there, they're getting ready for the game, they're talking about the game. And when they come to the game, they come there and they get there right on time. Just recently, I went to a football game and I was rushing because I didn't want to miss the first bounce. And so I was getting there and trying to get in there because I was so keen on making sure that I didn't miss the first bounce. Because as a real fan, I want to be primed and ready for the game to start. The Bible actually says in Psalm 122 verse 1 to 2, It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. They were prepared and ready to come to the house of God. They came early and they were, and they were going to be ready for the praise and worship and for, the, and for the game to begin. I remember one time I was preaching at a church. They had a one-hour service. And this, couple, and this family turned up half an hour into the service. And I remember thinking to myself, why would you even bother coming? You know, just coming as some kind of obligation. What they should have come is come out a little bit earlier, got themselves ready, got focused and got ready for the service to begin. A real fan is somebody who's primed for the game to begin. The third thing uh, about real fans is that real fans are paid up, paid up. Remember a number of years ago, I was watching, um, oh, sorry, I broke for the Hawthorne Football Club, just in case you didn't know that. And, um, and there was one year when they did a membership drive and they were trying to get members for their team. And what they would do is that whenever time someone signed up to be a member, they would give them a sticker and it was called Paid Up and Passionate. Paid up and passionate. And so you could see whenever someone was a member of Hawthorne, because they'd have a sticker on the back of their car or something like that, said paid up and passionate. Someone who's a real fan of their team is not afraid to actually put their money towards their team. I went to the State of Origin a number of years ago, and I never saw a single person, you know, you say to them, do you want to go to the State of Origin? Never heard a single person say, no, don't go, all they want's your money. They didn't do that. I was amazed. You know, do you want to go to the movies? No, all they want is your money. But sometimes people have a funny attitude about that, like like that with the things of God. If our heart is in the kingdom of God, then our treasure should go towards it as well. And a real fan is somebody who has no problem with sending their resource towards the house of God. Because when you're passionate about something, that's where your resource goes. The Bible says in Psalm 116 verses 12 to 14, what should I, 12 and 14, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What can I do for him after all that he's done for me? And one of the things it says, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. What that means is someone who's got a true house for the, a true heart and it's a true zeal for the house of God doesn't have a problem with their finances going towards it. One of the greatest blessings I've seen in the life of our church is seeing people starting to bring their resource into the house of God. After we did our financial seminar at the end of August, I'd realised that we'd had a number of people that would like to give some of their income to kingdom projects, but for whatever reason had felt it difficult to trust our church and found it difficult to bring their resource to the house of God. But I'm pleased to say that since that financial seminar, I have noticed that more and more people have decided that I'm going to be paid up and passionate and brought their resource to the house of God, which enables us to do more and more for the kingdom of God. And that's a sign that the people are real fans of the house of God. The next sign that you're a real fan is that real fans are persistent. They're persistent. Real fans stick with their team no matter what the result. I had a friend who committed the greatest crime you could do as an AFL supporter. He grew up barracking for Carlton and then he changed to barrack for Collingwood. Now that is the worst thing you can do. I mean, maybe it's because he lost his front teeth and felt like he fit in. I don't know what it was. But the thing was, he changed his team. And I remember, I I still say to him, I say, you're not a real fan. You you went from Carlton to Collingwood. You're not a a real fan because a real fan is someone who is persistent and, they, and they're someone who will stick with their team no matter what. I remember one time when I was playing local AFL football and, and we had a great victory. And after the game, you could not move in our dressing room. I mean, we went into our dress change room. All these supporters came in there. You could hardly move and everyone wanted to be with you. The next week we lost. I went into our change room and you could have swung a cat in there and not hit anybody. No one wanted to come and join us. I think Jesus understood this himself. He experienced that. In John chapter 6, the Bible says that he was speaking to a crowd of 5,000 people. And then the Bible says his teaching got too hard for them. 
too challenging for them. And so what happened was that one by one they all left and every single person left him. So he went from 5,000 people and all that was left were the 12 disciples. I mean, that's not a very successful meeting, you know what I'm saying? And so he turns to his disciples and he says to them, are you guys going to leave me as well? And Peter said to him, where else would we go? You have the words of eternal life. What was he saying? We're not going anywhere. We're real fans. We'll stick with you. Come hell or high water. We're not going anywhere. Those guys were fair weather fans and they were going, they were only coming out because of what they could have got out of Jesus. When it got too hard, they left, but they said, we're sticking with you. A real fan is someone who is persistent. One of the great things I've loved about our church is the people who have been, uh, who have been part of our church for years, who no matter what is going on, they're people who have been faithful and stuck it out and they've been persistent and I want to honour you and there are many of you who are like this you guys are real fans of the house of God and I want to let you know God always rewards our persistence and he always rewards our faithfulness real fans are people who are persistent the next thing about real fans is that real fans are proud what are they proud of? they're proud of their team they're proud of their team they're not afraid to wear their colours in America, there's this NFL team called the Green Bay Packers. And they have a group of, they, and it's like a rite of passage that when you, you know, when you go to a Green Bay Packers game and if you're a real fan, you put a foam a piece of cheese on your head. And they're called cheese heads and they're massive, these massive pieces of foam. What kind of fool would want to walk around with a big cheese head on their head. Well, I'll tell you, real fans, people who aren't ashamed of their team, who aren't afraid. A, a real fan is someone who will talk about their local church. A real fan is someone who's not embarrassed about their local church. You know, when, I come, when we came here to become the leaders of Kings, we got that great honour. One of the th first things I wanted to do was put hashtag we are Kings. We're not afraid and we're not ashamed. We're kings, baby. We're not going anywhere. And if you don't like it, you can take a hike. We are kings. Amen. And real fans are proud. They're actually proud uh, of their team. You know, I, re I went to a church when I was growing up and, and it was a very little church. And I only went there because I just felt God told me to go there. But I really hated it. And so I, when people would talk to me about my church, I would tell them not to come to ours. I'd actually tell them to go somewhere else. And I realise now that I probably wasn't even helping that church just by being there. That a real fan is somebody who would be willing, who is proud of their church and not afraid of it. A real fan is someone who's proud of their team uh, and unashamed. That's a real fan. The next thing, uh, the next sign that you're a real fan is that real fans are participators. They don't just spectate, they participate. Real fans get excited and aren't afraid to make some noise. I went to the State of Origin one year and right at the end, and this was when Darren Lockyer was playing, right at the end the Maroons needed to score a try to win and as they used to do, they don't do it anymore, but as they used to do, um, right at the end he gave a pass off to Billy Slater and in the last minute he scored a try. At that moment, this was at Suncorp Stadium, people weren't sitting around going, that was pretty good, wasn't it? I'm going to go home and die just that moment. They didn't do that. What did they do? Yeah! They got excited. They participated right there at that time because they were real fans. In the same way, my encouragement to our church is this. When it comes to the Word of God, we need to be people who are excited about the Word of God. Not just people who would chew it over later and think about it and digest. But when God, as I said this morning in church, when God's Word is declared, we drag it into our world through agreement. And agreement requires two-way communication. Uh, people who are real fans aren't afraid to participate. They're also aren't afraid to participate uh, in the praise and worship. They aren't afraid to participate uh, in the whole service. Real fans are people who will participate and be a part of the whole thing. And the last thing is this, worship team, will you come? Actually, um, <clears throat> one of the things I, because I'm mainly an AFL fan, and one of the things I love about what going to an AFL game is a time when, is when a player is caught holding the ball. So if you're, you've got a player and he's running with the ball, if he gets caught with the ball, it's called holding the ball and it's a free kick. Whenever a player gets caught, the supporters of his team 
they go, ball, like that. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, awesome. You're looking at me like, hmm. And uh, they go, ball. And they're waiting for the umpire to make his decision. And when the umpire makes the holding the ball um, a move, then the crowd goes, yeah. So what happens is this, something happens on the field, but the people in the crowd participate and get in agreement with what happened on the field. In the same way, when it comes to the Word of God, we need to be people who agree with God's Word. And the last thing uh, is this. Real fans are provocative. Real fans don't mind provoking the opposition. In some parts of the world, they have to separate soccer fans. They have, actually have to have like fences between them. Why? Because they're going to fight. Because they might taunt them and provoke them. I remember when I was back in, long time ago, back in 1989, I nearly got in a fight in the AFL Grand Final. And uh, the reason why I nearly got in a fight was because I barracked for Hawthorne, as you may not have known. And um, Hawthorne were playing in the Grand Final and we were playing against Geelong. And uh, Geelong had this player, um, his name was Gary Ablett. Now, Gary Ablett Sr., so he was the dad of Gary Ablett Jr. And Gary Ablett Sr. is probably the greatest AFL player uh, that has ever lived. But he used to originally play for Hawthorne. And so here he is. He actually kicked nine goals in this grand final against Hawthorne. But I nearly got in a fight with the opposition supporters because I was, and there was probably 80% of the crowd were Geelong. And we were in a place called, we were in standing room. And I'm, you know, he like this, got all these supporters around me. And I started, um, and I started taunting Gary Ablett. And I started calling him a Hawthorne reject whilst I was doing that. All these Geelong supporters looked at me and they wanted to punch on <laughs> because I was taunting the opposition. But I'm a real fan and I didn't care. And I was willing to taunt the opposition. Every time we get together here, we have an opportunity to taunt our opponent. And our opponent is the enemy. Our opponent is the devil. And the one thing he hates is when we praise God. When we praise God, we're just putting it in his face. You know, the Bible says that Satan was actually Lucifer, who was actually the worship leader in heaven. It was his job to lead people in worship. But eventually he wanted the worship for himself. And so that's why God kicked him out. But every time that we praise and worship God, we're literally taunting the enemy and he wants us to be quiet. You know, there was a time when um, Jesus was actually coming into Jerusalem and he's coming into Jerusalem, he's coming on a cult and it was just before he was actually going to be betrayed and, and put on the cross. But as he comes into Jerusalem, people had heard about it beforehand and they started lining the streets and they just started praising Jesus. And they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. He, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they started lining their coats along them. The Pharisees went up to Jesus and they said, Jesus, tell them to be quiet. I've never seen, any, I've never seen anywhere in the Bible other than evil people telling us to be quiet about worshipping God. And then they said, tell them, tell them to be quiet. And Jesus said, no, no, no. If they don't praise me, even the rocks will cry out. Someone's going to praise His name. And when we praise and worship God, we are declaring to the enemy. We are declaring to the atmosphere. We are lifting up His name. The Bible say, says if the Son of Man be lifted up, He's going to draw all men unto Him. And so real fans are people who are not intimidated by the atmosphere, do not need other people around them to get them going to praise and worship God. But we come ready to praise Him right from the start. We don't wait till the third song or the slower songs till we do it. We start praising Him and worshiping from the start and we start declaring His goodness and all of hell hates it, but we don't care because we are real fans and we will lift up the name of Jesus anytime any place. Amen. And so I thought what we'll do is this. We might give him a bit of praise here tonight. That we might praise and worship him because I get a feeling that we've got a bunch of real fans in the house. People who are